The enemy of truth does not counter with outright discernible lies, but rather confusion. The fastest way to trick someone into abandoning truth is not some sort of sly coercion, but to muddy the waters. Abortion ends in innocent human life. And ending in innocent human life is always wrong. It's always wrong. This is not a religious opinion. It's not a religious opinion. It's a matter of science and ethics. Abortion is simply not a religious issue. At its heart, this is an issue of biology and bioethics. 95% of academic biologists acknowledge that life begins at conception. Uh, that is to say that although completely dependent upon nourishment from a mother, obviously, a fetus from the moment of conception is a distinct human with distinct DNA. I hope it doesn't take a religious person to see that. Uh, no one has the right to end an innocent human life. No one can take away someone's personhood, even if you believe that there's a good and just reason for it, there's not. The greatest atrocities in history have occurred when someone's personhood was taken away from them. And there always seems to be some quote-unquote good reason for doing so. This person doesn't look like me. This person is making our country uh, a worse place to live. Uh, this person will be born into poverty, so we're just doing them a favor by killing them uh, now. When we say that someone is a human being, it doesn't come with a yeah, but. It doesn't come with a yeah, but. Yeah, but they're disabled. Yeah, but they were conceived in rape. No, there is no yeah, but. Uh, a person is a person. That is the start and end of the argument as to why abortion is a moral atrocity. It's a horror movie. Five dismembered human bodies found in a house, arms ripped off, skulls crushed. Uh, th these are babies with faces with eyes and noses, fingers, toes, and nobody even cares, nobody investigates. The police are just like, whatever, ho-hum. These are human beings, they're human beings. We should always stand against abortion. With that in mind, I beg you, I beg you, always consider uh, a politician's stance on abortion when you step into the voting booth. I cannot, as a priest, command any of you to vote in a particular way. I can't do it. But I can at least ask you, please consider this. There's room for many political beliefs within the church, as long as we're giving a highest importance uh, to the dignity of the human person and the social teachings of our church. You cannot be in favor of abortion. You just can't do it. You simply cannot be a pro-choice Catholic, plain and simple. End of story. It does not exist. It does not exist. The only way you could in good conscience support an openly pro-choice politician is if he or she is the lesser of two evils. The lesser of two evils. Or if you suspect that perhaps the pro-life politician is, is uh, corrupt and just lying to, to get votes. Uh, the question to ask here is really is simple. Why would we ever support someone who's an advocate for killing innocents? I'm not telling you how you need to vote, but at least consider a politician's stance on abortion before voting, please. That's our duty as Christians. First of all, continue to support with your, with your time and your dollars pregnancy resource centers. Vote for policies that help women in need, both financially and materially. Again, voting matters, right? This is a patriotic duty. It's one of the ways that Catholic Americans fight for justice. Our culture is telling women to fight their own biology, to fight biological reality. No. Adult women uh, bear and give birth to human children, right? And that's a beautiful thing. In addition, in addition to these, continue to teach and preach abstinence and chastity, especially in your homes with your children. I know it's not popular. I know it's not the cool thing to do. Whatever, whatever. You don't need to be a scientist to know that sex makes a baby, right? Uh, if you aren't ready for a baby, don't have sex. This is not that complicated. Uh, this is why the church uh, teaches that marriage uh, is only acceptable, the only acceptable home for the sexual act is in the sacrament of marriage. The choice that people 
should be making is not whether or not to have an abortion, uh, but whether or not to engage in an act that has procreation as a natural result. Finally, as Christians and as people of goodwill, we need to continue to rehumanize, rehumanize, remind people of the humanity of those they might be inclined to throw away, not just babies, but the poor, uh, the elderly, immigrants, the mentally ill. What an opportunity we have right now. What an opportunity, an opportunity for a better world where one more scourge against human dignity becomes a thing of the past. Abortion ends a human life. We have no right, no right to do that. This is not some fanatical Christian idea. It should be shared by all people of goodwill. So do not fear the anger of friends, of family, relatives, the mob. You have science on your side. You have ethics on your side. You have truth on your side. Stand firm, stand firm, and keep praying. Keep praying and engage with others in charity.